Xbox's E3 2018 press conference is coming at you live on Sunday, June 10th at 1 p.m. Pacific. And if reports by some of these websites turn out to be true, it's looking that it might be Microsoft's longest one yet. What's going on, guys? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. And before we get started, make sure you check out my previous video I posted earlier today. It's about the idea of Microsoft potentially combining Xbox Live Gold with Xbox Game Pass. Let me know what you think if you do check out the video. Now, this is information taken by Gaming Bolt, and I've seen it passed around from a few different other outlets, basically saying that Microsoft press conference this year is going to be two hours long, which would actually eclipse their previous record holder, which was last year's conference where they unveiled the Xbox One X or Project Scorpio. That one came in at about an hour and 40 minutes. So it's looking like this one's going to be 20 minutes longer. And now I'm starting to kind of revisit some of the predictions I made during my Xbox E3 prediction video, which I think I posted about a week ago. Now, I was a little bit curious to see if Microsoft was actually going to go two hours this year. They moved their press conference from the Galen Center, which is what they've done for the last few years now, into the Microsoft Theater. They don't even really have a show floor presence at the Convention Center this year as they moved everything to the Microsoft Theater. And I was wondering if they would actually go the full two hours because Microsoft has been saying that this is like their largest E3 showing ever right and we already know that if you're going to say that they showed 42 games last year on their stage so are we going to get more than 42 yes yeah, some of them for sure will be small indie games that they'll use in a montage or whatever but now i'm just kind of wondering if we're going to get more in-depth uh looks at games like sony's doing with their press conference are we going to get a really kind of an extended look at forza horizon 4 is the extra time going to be there because they want to showcase the Gears of War uh, spinoff game and then maybe tease Gears of War 5 after that? Maybe show off a Halo spinoff game and tease Halo 6? Are there going to be more third-party games on board with extended demos? There's a lot to really think about. But the other thing I wanted to talk about because, I mean, the time isn't really that much of an issue. Two hours is a long time for sure and they can actually showcase a lot of stuff. A lot of great third-party content, a lot of indie content, but people really want to see the first-party stuff coming from Xbox. And there's this kind of sentiment sweeping the Xbox community about whether this is the make-it-or-break-it moment for Xbox ever or going forward. I am not really sure. People just say it's make-it-or-break-it. That if Microsoft comes to the C3 and doesn't bring the goods, then they are going to abandon the brand. Now, I can't tell you either way about whether you should consider this make it or break it, and if they disappoint you, you should leave. I mean, you're a consumer. You should have expectations about what you want to see from Microsoft, of course, and if it disappoints you, well, then you're well within your right to be like, I'm going to take my business someplace else. That's what a consumer does. Now... I hope Microsoft comes to the C3 with the extra time given to them because they don't have to talk about Scorpio for 10 to 15 minutes. Show some extra games. Maybe my Fable and my, you know, No Perfect Dark prediction is wrong. Maybe they show that off, although I'm still going with the fact that those two aren't there. Maybe my Crackdown prediction was wrong about it being delayed to 2019. Maybe it's going to be there. But people want to see what Xbox is doing for the future. Now, me personally, the idea of a make it or break it thing is kind of, I don't know. I really don't kind of believe in that. If Microsoft doesn't make great games going forward, then I just won't buy the games they make. You know what I mean? I already am buying a lot more PlayStation games than I ever thought I would. I bought Persona 5 recently. I have bought two Yakuza games. Uh, I bought some indie games there as well, so m a lot of my money is kind of getting shifted to PlayStation because they tend to have a little bit more content that I desire. Uh, I'll still play all my third-party stuff on the Xbox One X because it is where I 
uh, you know, prefer to play at. But I'm not of the opinion that anything is really make it or break it. I'll just spend less time on the platform and buy less things. And the competition has something I want to buy, I'll buy it. But I understand exactly where people are coming from on this one. I understand the frustration. I understand that people want to see more. I understand that people want to kind of uh, feel comforted knowing exactly what is coming in the future. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I've stated before on the podcast, I do with Jazz, and in my videos that, you know, the games are coming and the games are going to be years away. Now, if that upsets you in any way or shape or form and you don't want to wait around for that, then that's your prerogative. You can just leave now. You know, I know a lot of people bought and spend a lot of money on the Xbox One X, whether it's $500 or $250, and they want to see the stuff right now, but it doesn't seem like it's in the cards because, as we all know, great games take a long time to make. And at some point in the last three years, Microsoft stopped investing in games. It's pretty clear to me, and it should be clear to you with how the release schedule uh, has been both for 2017 and for this year, 2018. Now, there's like three type of consumers in my eyes that Microsoft has. They have the ones who really uh, enjoy Xbox, but aren't really too bothered about knowing what is coming. They just are here to play games. They don't really care about the console war that's going on they just want to play video games and xbox provides them that they don't really care what happens at e3 and that's probably the vast majority of people who game on any platform they're not really involved in the youtube scene they're not involved in the twitter scene they just play the games on the consoles that their friends have right there's the other consumer that is frustrated with xbox that wants to see them improve and they'll voice their discontent or at least say, hey, I think it should be done like this. Why isn't going like this? And there's the other flip side of that one who is really doesn't mind what Microsoft is doing. You know what I mean? Like they'll they'll they're so kind of with Microsoft that they'll just take anything that's given to them and be like, okay, that's fine. But then of course, there's the other type of uh Xbox fan or this could be really applied to any sort of fandom out there, whether it's PlayStation, Nintendo, sports, you know, wrestling or anything. The fan that is just perfectly content with whatever Microsoft does. You know, Phil Spencer and Mike Ibarra could walk out on stage, drop their pants, take a huge steaming shit on a plate and give it to them and be like, here, this is the best thing you'll ever taste. And those people will take a bite out of that turd sandwich and declare it's the best thing they've ever eaten. There's those types of fans. They exist in all things. And I'm sure once E3 comes and goes this year and all the reactions are, you know, put out there by concerned Xbox fans, real concerned Xbox fans, and the fake concerned ones, and then, of course, the ones who are, you know, there's nothing wrong. Everything's amazing. This shit sandwich was spectacular, Phil. Thank you so much. Right? There's going to be a... You know, there's going to be a consensus and all those different things. For me, I just look at it as... I make up my own mind. It doesn't bother me or have an impact of what anybody else thinks about something I enjoy. If... I watch the Xbox conference and it's bad. I'll come out and say it's bad. And it doesn't bother me that some people be like, Rand, you're wrong. It was great. I'm a man of my, you know, opinions. I know what I like and what I don't like. I don't get frustrated if people call me or people disagree with me. But on the flip side, if I think the conference is good, if I thought there was quality stuff there, and I come out and say... I enjoyed this conference. I'm not going to get upset when those other people come to say, how could you say that, Rand? It was a shit show of a conference. They didn't show anything. You're just damage controlling. You can never win with any of these groups. And that's something I've come to learn doing YouTube. There's always going to be one group that is always against you. You know, whether you're praising Microsoft 
You have people saying you're damage controlling. If you're criticizing Microsoft, you have the other people saying that you're just doing this for popularity and views. You can never win with all that. And I know this has kind of devolved into something that's, you know, wasn't what it was supposed to be. But this is something I actually kind of wanted to get off my chest for a while now. You know what I mean? People try so hard to convince others that they're not having fun or trying to get them to change their views to more in line with them. Peer pressure, things like that. But that doesn't necessarily work with me. It never has. I'm going to watch E3 and I'm going to give my honest to God opinions about what I thought. If it sucked, I'll say it sucked. If I liked it, I'll say I liked it. And mark my words, mark my words, you guys, everybody listening to this video, when we do the reaction podcast or whatever, the other side, the ones who disagree with my stance will come in there and they'll be upset and they'll either say I'm damage controlling or I'm you know, just riding the hate train. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You can't you can't just be honest. There's always some sort of agenda you're trying to push. It's always something. But taking it back to E3 really quickly, I can't wait to watch it. Two hours long is going to seem like a long time. Uh, hopefully they have a lot of ton of new stuff to see because I get excited watching, uh, you know, E3. Uh, hopefully it's not like the B Battlefield 5, uh, you know, reveal today. Uh, hopefully it's, you know, more action-packed and things like that. And yeah, I can't wait for Battlefield 5. But excuse the rambling, guys. I'm sorry this video turned into be something it really wasn't supposed to be. But I just wanted to talk about that. I'm looking forward to E3. Two hours. Hope Microsoft has a ton to show to make everybody happy. But I already know, no matter what they do, no matter what Microsoft does... People are going to hate on it, and people are going to praise it, and uh, it is what it is. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel for more content, hit the sub button, all that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.